بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد قال الله تعالى في قرآنه المجيد بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم خلق الإنسان ضعيفا وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين صدق الله العظيم it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has gathered us in this Tazkiyah workshop where we recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we get to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we talk about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there are malaikas that look for these type of gatherings, that look for the gatherings that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they gather, and when they find, they call other malaikas. You know, as, as human beings, what we do is when we find some good deals on something, we invite people, come, there's a good deal here, or there's, there's something good here. The same, the malaikas, that's what they do when they see the gatherings that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they keep coming until they reach the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks them, why are you here? They, the malaika, they replied that we are sitting amongst the people that are remembering you, Allah. And to the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the malaikas that why are you, uh, what do they want? Uh, they say that they want to be near you and they want your forgiveness and, and they also want to be protected from Jahannam. And because of the barqa of this gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the malaika that you are my witness that I have forgiven them and I will give them paradise. So these are such blessing gatherings. Today my topic is about ujub and about takabbur, pride. It is one of those diseases that we have in our heart that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warns us. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل من الكبر. من كبر. That Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, He who has a mustard seed or atom of kibr, of pride in his heart, he will not enter Jannah. You know in another hadith that we know, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that he who has the iman of a mustard seed, will enter Jannah. But you can have all the Iman, but with that mustard seed of pride, you will not enter Jannah. So th that is such a bad disease. And how can a human being even have pride? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, like I, I read in the ayah, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفَ that we have created human being very weak. And we've been through that. A lot of us that get sick, or for those that get injuries, one sickness it might be, one day you, you don't know what you're going to do, what's going to happen. You can't even control your own body. So how can a person, how can a human being even be prideful? How can he have pride? Especially for this dunya. This dunya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is cursed. That this dunya has no value in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if it did, if, even if it had the value of the mosquito wing, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give water to the mushrikeen and the kuffar. But this dunya has no value, it is cursed. So people that are taking pride because they have some, something in this dunya, they have some value, they might have... Some people when they get... when they become like a CEO or they get a priority over someone, how do they become? They become arrogant. They look at that person. They criticize that person. They look down upon that person. That, that pride or arrogance is, is the thing that will block you from going to Jannah. As human beings, we, we are not allowed to do that. The only person that, that can take pride is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is khaliq and we are makhluq. If all makhluq are the same, what, what are we fighting over? And and if you're attaining something for this dunya, if you're obta obtaining something in this dunya, that is already cursed. So you're taking pride over something that's cursed. What, what are you gaining? People, when they gain something small in this dunya, they become very prideful. 
they, they become prideful of a position. And that position might be becoming a teacher or some, uh, something. Or even, you know, maybe becoming a substitute teacher. And they think they're so big that they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that gave them that position. Instead of being prideful, you should do shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can all, all go back to the story of Adam alayhi salatu as I mentioned in the Quran, where when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and he told the malaika to do, uh, to prostrate to him, what did Shaitan say? Qala ana khayrun min khalaqtani min nari wa khalaqtahu min teen. That I am better than that person. That, his, er, that he became arrogant and he showed pride to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This act of Shaitan was the action that kicked him out of Jannah. That's, that's how much Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is warning us that do not take pride. You, you don't have the right to take pride as human beings. But at the time of Sahaba, some Sahaba asked, Ya Nabi of Allah, when Rasulullah quoted the hadith that he who has a mustard seed of pride in his heart, he will not enter Jannah. One Sahabi asked, Ya Rasulullah, if I like to dress up very nice, if I like to look good, is that also pride? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said no. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah jameelun yuhibbu jamal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves beauty. So the sahabas, what they took this sense of that they used to compete. They used to compete on, for deen, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They wouldn't show pride in the sense of this dunya. But they would show pride or they would compete. That, you know, as we all know at the time of at the time of wars, some of the Sahabas, they used to, you know, give in the path of Allah generously. But they never had qibr in their heart, or they never brought pride in their heart. Look, I gave more than this person. I gave more than this person. Their only intention was to reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is uh, one story that uh, Malik bin Dinar, rahimahullah, he was one time sitting and he saw the governor and he saw his son. And his son was passing by and the way he was walking, he was showing, he was showing pride. That I'm the son of the governor, you know. I'm the son of this person. So, he, so Malik bin Dinar, rahimahullah, tells him, why are you walking like this? And the, the son of the governor replies, Do you, don't you know who I am? He said, I know who you are, rather I know who your dad is also. He says, then why can I walk like this? Balik bin Dinar rahimahullah tells him, when you are a baby, what are you made of? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hal ata ala insani hainu min dahri lam yakun shay'in maskura. When you weren't even a thought, when you were nothing, when you were a drop of semen, nothing. And when you will die, what will, what will you be? You will be corpse. You will be dead corpse which will stink. And people will run away from you. And all you carry around in your, in your stomach is filth. That is the reality of a human being. So, uh, so how can you even take pride? But rather the Sahabas, they did not take pride for this dunya. They took pride for the hereafter. How to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... For this d disease of pride, there are two ways that we can, you know, t take this disease out of our heart. Number one, as uh, we were talking about the eight point of tazkiyah, which is khidmat, to serve people. That's, that, will, that's, that is how you will be humble. You're doing khidmat for another human being. So there is no pride. You're a creation, he's a creation. There is no pride. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humble you. And the second is that you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as, as we are here to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best way is to connect with a, a person or a shaykh. This was the same method, the same silsila that the sahabas did with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If they had any problems, they would connect to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
as uh, it comes in in a narration that one time one sahabi he came out from this house and he's like I became munafiq Hanzala radiallahu anh he said I became munafiq so Abu Bakr Siddiq asked him oh Hanzala how are you saying that you are becoming munafiq he says when I sit with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I feel Allah I get my imans become stronger but when I sit with my family and I joke around with them my I feel like my imans leaving and the same problem, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr Siddiq said the same thing. He's like, I feel the same. And what did they do? They didn't just start talking amongst themselves. What they went, they connected to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That, O oh, oh Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have this. What did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? He said, that is not a sign of a munafiq. It is also because that you guys, you're gathering. The effect of the environment where we are. When we gather around good people, when we gather around... Awliya of Allah, Allah comes to our heart. If we gather around filth and wrong people, that whatever topic they're topic, talking about will come to our heart. So like that, may Allah give us tawfiq to you know, gain more from these, uh, these groups or um, these workshops that we're doing to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get connected to our shaykh so he can get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give all of us tawfiq to act upon whatever has been said. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim.